Hello everyone, today's topic, how to prevent explosions in our liquid sulfur storage area. Welcome to the Experts Network. YouTube channel, Gerald Bomey here, 30 plus year veteran of sulfur recovery. In a previous video, we talked about the causes of fires and explosions in sulfur plants. In today's video, we're going to go into more depth about how to prevent explosions in the liquid sulfur storage area. We talked before about the fact that there's H2S in your liquid sulfur. That H2S comes out of the liquid sulfur in the pit, in the storage tank, in the loading area. If it gets together with air and the H2S is above 3.2%, it can blow up. How do we prevent those explosions? We go back to whatever teaching you may have had in the past about a fire triangle or an explosion triangle. It takes three things to cause an explosion. You have to have the H2S that's above 3.2%, you have to have air, and you have to have some sort of ignition source. Break any one of those, remove any one of those three, explosions can't happen. That's how we prevent them in the liquid sulfur storage area. Let's deal first of all with ignition sources. If you're working in a sulfur plant, you're probably in a refinery or a gas plant where the standard ignition sources aren't allowed. You can't walk around out there with a cigarette. You're not supposed to be talking on your cell phone, lighting matches, things like that. But there's a couple of other common ignition sources that are more hard to prevent in sulfur plants. One of them is that pouring liquid sulfur generates static electricity. When it pours into the pit, when it pours into the storage tank, the truck, the rail car, that generates static. If that builds up a spark, that can and has been the ignition source in previous explosions. We can get around that by grounding the entire system, making sure that we can't build up enough static to cause that spark. Hopefully that system is in place and works at your facility. The most common ignition source, however, is pyrophoric iron sulfide. Solid sulfur generates a corrosion product. Iron sulfide that when exposed to air is pyrophoric, lights on fire, acts as the ignition source for fires or explosions. Sulfur pits, sulfur tanks, loading areas, it's almost guaranteed that that pyrophoric material is going to exist somewhere. That's my short way of saying that getting rid of all ignition sources is pretty much impossible. So let's try to break the triangle another way. Maybe we get rid of the air from our storage vessel. We blanket that pit or tank with nitrogen, with steam, with process gas. If we do that, we can't explode. However, only about 5%, if that, of sulfur plants use that inert blanket. There's a number of issues with it. Nitrogen costs money. Steam can cause corrosion. Using process gas can be difficult. The biggest reason, however, we don't like that is we actually like air in those vessels because it minimizes the pyrophoric buildup. As long as there's some level of air in there, less chance of generating pyrophoric materials. So most people like to break the triangle by this next step, they actually put air in their pit, their storage tank, but they put enough air in there to get the H2S below 3.2%, dilute it down. You can guarantee enough airflow by a number of different ways. The old fashioned way we did it was to simply put vents on our sulfur pits and storage tanks and hope that there was enough natural draft to pull sufficient air across that we couldn't get to that 3.2% LEL. In more modern facilities, we use adductors. Some places use blowers, again, to guarantee a certain amount of airflow that we can't get to the LEL. 
Another example at a loading area, somebody using a fan. We've seen adductors, uh, whatever used at those locations as well to keep the H2S below 3.2%. So that's a common way of doing things, but the problem with just lowering the H2S content is that it only prevents explosions in that specific vessel. As soon as you move the liquid sulfur into the next vessel, H2S can come out and build up there in the truck, the rail car, the end user. So the best way to prevent explosions is not just to dilute the H2S, but to actually remove it through a process called degassing. Degassing takes the H2S out of the liquid sulfur, and we know from lots of previous studies, if we can lower that H2S in liquid sulfur to less than 10 ppm in the sulfur itself, we can never get to the lower explosive limit in the vapor space above those tanks, vessels, rail cars, whatever. I'm not going to go into all the different ways that we can degas sulfur, except to say that just natural degassing, waiting for the H2S to come out, isn't going to work. The H2S is chemically bound to the sulfur. It takes a long time for that chemical bond to break and release the H2S. So degassing systems speed that up by using a number of different methods. Some of them use catalyst. Some of them use sparging of air or other gas through the sulfur. Uh, there's other ways of doing it. We can do the degassing in the pit. We can do the degassing on the way between the rundowns and the pit. We can do the degassing in separate towers or vessels. Perhaps those will be topics for another day. But if I can take the H2S down to less than 10 ppm, I never have to worry about explosions. That's the ultimate way to prevent them. I want to finish this video up by quickly mentioning measurement of H2S in sulfur. If you want to make sure a degassing system is working, you have to make sure you're below 10 ppm. There are laboratory analyzers for doing that. That will be a topic of a future video presentation if you're interested in that. That's it for this topic. Hopefully it gave you some good background information on how we prevent these explosions in the liquid sulfur storage area. If you have any questions about this topic, please send them to us. If you like these videos and want to learn more as we put them out, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember, ring that bell, and we hope to see you again. Thank you.